Next up on our last lightning round session for the day is Rosella Tesh, who's right here in Nebraska, on the other side of the state of Nebraska from where I am in Shadron, at the Shadron Public Library, and she's going to talk about this um, a really cool collection they have inside their small library. Go ahead, Rosella. Okay, so thank you for having me and welcome to everybody. Um, I will start talking about uh, our location. We are located in Northwest Nebraska and uh, Chardon, it's uh, the city of which we are the public library. Population of Chardon is 3,800. We are the biggest um, community in a radium of 50 miles. We are a place of uh, open spaces, not industrialization, lots of nature. There are two prevalent ethnic groups in our community, the white and the Native American. Sometime relationship between the two have been a little bit rocky. We border with South Dakota and with the Pine Ridge Reservation, which is um, um, the reservation of the Lakota Nation. Oops. Okay, a little bit about our library, known as the CPL, Southern Public Library, was founded in 1913. It's a Carnegie building uh, with 5,500 square feet of space divided onto levels. So we are really <laughs> tiny. We <clears throat> have a collection uh, for a total of 36,000 items and the early circulation of 55,265. So, Tiny Library, its name and its history. Um, the collection is called the IPNA and stands for Indigenous People of North America. The content is books divided in fiction and fiction and biographies, CDs, or which are musical CDs of a contemporary and traditional uh, Native American music and DVDs that and they are um, feature films and documentaries made by Native American artists. The name was um, a little bit of um, a name that we serendipitously found we already had a certain amount of books and other items in a particular section of the library on the subject of Native American cultures. And we didn't know what to call it. And one day I read an article that was talking about indigenous people um, of North American cultures. And so I thought that, that it's exactly what we should call our collection. And so we began with that. So here it's a photo of um, the collection, the book part. It's located close to very beautiful windows. So, so there is lots of um, light. And we have a little bit of a reading area with a couch, a sectional black couch and some chairs. The structure of the collection is as follows. So, as I said, we have nonfiction items and they are classified with the Dewey Decimal System, fiction, biographies, periodicals, and I should say newspapers, music, um, the CDs, so the DVDs. Also, we have a section that they are young adult nonfiction, young adult fiction, junior nonfiction, junior fiction, and junior biography. So how all of this came to happen? Here you have another photo of the collection and you can see a little bit better the reading area. Um, around 2010, we start to group together um, items of uh, Native American interest. A little bit was due to the um, the ability to find them in the collection a bit uh, easier when um, we were looking for for patterns. And a little bit was while we were um, cleaning and reorganizing our bookshelves, those books were popping up. And um, I, we started to see 
that um, in uh, collecting them in the same place, they were starting to give the idea of a culture inside a culture that needed to be honored. It, it was like if the books were talking to us, the material was talking to us. Um, sorry, I went a little bit too, okay, fast. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, and so um, we start to classify under IPNA in 2011. In 2012, we start um, to add musical CDs. That was um, due to the influence of one of our staff, and she was she is Native American. And um, we were talking about the beauty of many of the songs and the music. And so we decided that it could be something that our patterns would be interested to. In 2013, we have the movies. So after the CDs, we thought, oh, well, we, we should try to um, find movies and documentaries, and we discovered a new world of uh, cinematography. Very, very interesting, very beautiful, soul-searching movies. In 2014, well, we had the movies and another natural growth and um, development from this collection was why we don't present those movies to the bigger public. And we decided to make a movie festival. The movie festival has gone on for 40 years and it's called Trading Stories because uh, the aim of this festival is to have people um, of different cultures to sit down and trade their stories. So they, they're the different aspect of their culture to confront, compare and share. In 2016, we started to add um, the periodicals and the newspapers for our um, patterns. And in 2018, we did the young adult and junior IPNN collections. Okay, some statistics. Here you can see um, on the photo, Mr. Michael Murphy is a Native American artist and he plays the flute. And one of the, um, the things that flew out of this collection is to offer other programs like dancing, um, art shows and craft, and also concerts of um, Native American music. So um, the, this little tiny collection has uh, 739 items. The value is $10,771. And the circulation, the total circulation since 2011 has been $3,700. So why to do this collection? Why to go to the travel? First of all, to honor a culture historically important to our city. And uh, here I want to say also that um, we decide to honor um, also the culture of uh, the white settlers um, preparing and implementing a local history collection. So we have a balance for the cultures provide a wider, deeper understanding of Native American cultures, of course, promote better relationships between the two ethnic groups, support people research about their roots, entice tourists to use and stay at the library longer, and to have an ease of, of material search and retrieval. Gifts of IPNA. Um, this collection has given lots of things to the library and to the library staff. Not only the people that we have been able to meet, uh, to meet uh, through the concerts, through the movie festivals, very interesting artistic people, but also, like I said, the better understanding of the American and uh, Native American cultures, donations. Um, Many people in the community have donated beautiful, very beautiful, very interesting books to enlarge our 
IPNA collection. Artwork, here you have um, a photo on the side of one of the prints that were donated to the library. Previous to that, our artwork was basically made of discolored prints um, from um, an old um, grant that um, was um, providing arts to library. We have now beautiful, vibrant piece of arts. Um, also, we have received items like a donation of a drum, um, several bowls, cashinas, and so on. The Trading Story Movie Festival has been uh, one of the products of the collection and it has brought people to the library that otherwise we would have never seen. Publicity for the library, and I will talk a little bit more about this in a minute and more patterns. Um, Native American patterns were seldom at the library before we start um, our IPNA collection. We have now a big wide use um, by the communities in Pine Ridge that come here to do grocery, to do errands, and then stop at the library. They feel comfortable. They feel that they're values and culture are respected. And so they come and they use the library, they use the computers, they spend time in the reading room. And uh, okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the publicity. So in 2014, um, one of the opinionists of the Rapid City Journal came to the library because of the movie festival. He was very enthusiastic about the movies that he saw, but also he was really impressed by the IPNA collection. When uh, he returned to Rapid City, which is so the main city in our biggest city in our region, he went to several library, uh, public libraries and college libraries in around the area to see if anybody else had this type of collection and to his surprise he didn't find any so in this part of the country we are really unique for us it was uh, very important to have our work recognized i think also was a little bit of free, free publicity and so we were very excited about that so um, what we hope for the future, of course, we want to have more space for the collection, more uh, events. And here on the side, you can see an image of uh, a dance during uh, the movie festival. We want also to try to collect the artifacts. Unfortunately, from this corner of Nebraska, lots of historical artifacts like uh, Beaded work, um, photography, it's living. Every time there is a change of uh, hands of property from a generation to another, or when uh, people die and uh, don't have um, anybody to take over their estates, stuff is dispersed through auctions and then it leaves the state. And so we would like to have the capability and the possibility to add those artifacts or some, some of those artifacts to our collection. So to be able to preserve a little bit of history of our corner of Nebraska. And this is, this is it. <laughs> okay, all right, <coughs> great, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you very much, Rosella. Um, Thank you. So, thanks so much for sharing about that really great collection. Next time I'm out in Western Nebraska, I'll have to stop by and take a look at it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right.